What's up YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. My name's Jonathan. So today we're gonna to be looking at variance reduction techniques for Monte Carlo simulations when we're trying to value a financial contract. So obviously the problem with uh, Monte Carlo simulation is that it can be computationally expensive and when we're actually having to uh, create a large number of sample paths just to get the expectation of that discounted payoff. So um, that's, that's what we're trying to get around. We want to minimize the amount of sample paths that we have to create and reduce the variance that's spread around our theoretical option price. So how can we do that? Well, one way is actually by uh, using something called an antithetic variable. Now, this variable actually is the perfect negative uh, correlation of the asset price that we're trying to predict. Now, let's jump into the video you're gonna learn how to actually value this on a real option price. We're gonna be taking the Commonwealth Bank of Australia and looking at a real option value and trying to reduce the amount of variables that we have to simulate. So let's jump into the video. So Monte Carlo variance reduction methods. So in this tutorial, we're going to investigate ways that we can reduce that variance of the results of a Monte Carlo simulation method when we're valuing financial derivatives. Now, the mathematic notation and everything, um, the examples that we go through come from this book, uh, Implementing Derivative uh, Models. Very good book, highly recommend. Unfortunately, although it's a great method for approximating va uh, option values with complex payoffs and high dimensionality, in order to get that acceptable accurate estimate, we must perform a very large number of simulations. Instead, what we can do is actually lean on a variance reduction method. Now, um, this works in the same principles as that of hedging an option position. So for example, the variability of a hedged option portfolio will have a smaller variance than that of its unhedged counterpart. Now, here we're just importing dependencies. Today we're leaning upon uh, math, numpy, pandas, date time, um, scipy stats module, and matplotlib. So let's talk about antithetic variates. So let's um, say that we're writing an option on asset S1. And that, we have an, and that we have another option on asset S2. Now let's pretend that S1 and S2 are perfectly negatively correlated with each other. So, and that they have the exact same price. So here we simply have two SDEs of those two underlying assets that are perfectly negatively correlated with each other that follow just the Black-Scholes model dynamics. So here we have the drift term of both of the assets and here we have the volatility term. Now. Here, um, this term for the variance, we can see that uh, we're sampling this DZT from the Weiner process, but they are perfectly negatively correlated. So when one goes up, the other goes down by the exact same amount. Now, since the price and volatility of the two assets are identical, the value of these two options are identical as well. However, the variance of a portfolio payoff containing both of these contracts is much less than the variance of the payoff of each individual contract. Now, if you can picture the payoff um, uh, probability of just a single European contract, you get a large spike as you hit the strike price. Now, in essence, what we're doing here by combining those two contracts in the same portfolio, we're smoothing out that probability distribution and, and removing that spike. So the basic intuition is that when one option pays out, the other does not. So now with that in mind, the implementation of the antithetic uh, variate. So to implement an antithetic variate, we have to create a hypothetical asset, that S2, which is perfectly negatively correlated with the original asset. So the implementation is very simple. If we consider the example of a European call option as in the one that we did last week, our simulated payoffs under the following ST dynamics are as follows. So by using Black-Scholes dynamics, we can get this discretized formula for the ST plus delta T here. So uh, what I want you to pay particular close attention to, remember is this, um, this variable ST. Now that's just part of the Weiner process and they're incremented um, independently from each other. And we can just replace that by the square root of the change in time with this epsilon value, which is just the normal distribution, a standard normal distribution with uh, mean of zero and variance of one. Now we have the contract, uh, that, the contracts that we're simulating. We've got two, we've got CT, which is our normal uh, max of the option payoff uh, minus that strike price. 
And then we've got this uh, C uh, hat, C bar, which is just exactly the same, except when we actually take um, that random normal variable, we're going to take the inverse of that. So we're gonna take minus um, that value as part of this diffusion term. And what we actually get then is that these two payoffs are exactly negatively correlated. So by doing that, again, we're, we're reducing the variance on the entire portfolio. Now, it might not be exactly obvious why that is right now, but just remember that simple intuition, which is that when one pays off, the other doesn't. Now, we'll show a diagram in a second. So now for that call um, option price that we're trying to evaluate from the market, we've got CBA. The stock price was 101.15 at the time. Uh, last Monday, we had a strike price of 98.01. We calculated that volatility of 9.91% by actually uh, finding a different strike of a traded product um, and then actually finding out what the implied volatility is with a calculator. And then we have the risk-free rate. We've got the number of time steps, although remember that we actually can have that as one, but I wanna actually discretize it to show you guys. We have a number of simulations, which is a mediocre 1000. Now we have the market value price, which is $3.86 in the marketplace. And then we have the time, which is yeah, 0.164 years. So um, slow solution. We're gonna break it down into the discretized steps, although we don't need to, because remember that the discretization uh, for the Black-Scholes model is a perfect representation of that SDE. So we're gonna pre-compute the constants, and that's the same as last week. DT is equal to the time divided by the number of time steps. Uh, we've got new DT, which is the drift term. So we've got R minus a half vol uh, to the power of two times by the time step. We've got vol SDT, which is just the volatility times by the square root of that time step. And then we've got the log of S, which is just the log of the stock price. Now, remember we have um, for this slow steps, we've got the standard error placeholders where we're just gonna um, add up the sum of those, uh, those payoffs. And we're also gonna add the sum of the squared payoff, the square of the payoff. So for the Monte Carlo method, we uh, step through each simulation, I in range M, we have two assets now. We've got S1 and S2. And what we're trying to do, remember, is that we have perfectly negatively correlated assets. So we actually get a placeholder epsilon for this random vari normal variable. And then for the first asset, we add um, this diffusion term with a positive epsilon, and then we, <laughs> we add the negative of that amount um, in terms of that diffusion term to the second asset. So when one goes up, the other goes down by the exact amount and vice versa. So now we have S1 and S2 as just the exponential of the log of um, ST1 and ST2. And then what we do is we take the average, which is just a half times by the payoff of the first um, plus the payoff of the second. So we're just taking the average of these two products each, um, each time we simulate. Then, yeah, look, you just take the sums of the payoff and then of the squares. We can compute the expectation by just simply, um, we, we, we've already done an average of the two here. So yes, we just have to divide by M and discount uh, with that um, factor, the risk-free rate and the time. So then we just end up with a lot lower um, standard error at 0.03. Now I think to achieve that last time, we needed to simulate about 100,000 variables, but uh, yeah, interesting. Go back to last week's video to see. Now for the fast solution, what do we wanna do? We wanna vectorize that entire thing and make it super simple and quicker, especially when we're adding more variables. We love vectorizing things um, at ASX Portfolio. If you can't vectorize it, you probably don't understand the math that's going in behind um, using NumPy arrays. So for simple processes, the SDE does not need to be approximated, like in the case of geometric Brownian motion, we can just simulate the variables of the final time step. Um, and yeah, because essentially they're independent increments. So uh, we pre-compute the constants. We just have one time step now. We're just going straight to big T. Uh, for the Monte Carlo method now, we have Z which is this just uh, random variable matrix of, of time step by the number of um, simulations we wanna do, M. Now we have the two assets, deltas, matrices that we're trying to, so we have the drift term plus the volatility of that 
random variable matrix, and then we have the inverse of that for the diffusion term, diffusion delta. Remember, and then we have to take the cumulative sum across those paths, across those simulation paths, and that's on axis equal to zero, and we're just adding back the initial place. Um, which is just that uh, natural logarithm of um, S. So now that we have those paths, we're gonna just compute the expectation. So for that, all we need to do is actually just get um, the exponential of that natural logarithm back. So we get the price ST1 and ST2. Then we're going to take the final uh, row, so the final time step, which is in fact, um, just this time, we only have the one, the one column, the final time step. And what we do is we get the average of the uh, ST1, the, asset, the first contract price uh, payoff, and then the second. So exactly the same as the last thing. Then we take the average of all those payoffs across the paths. So take the sum of the payoffs, divide by M and discount back uh, to the present time. So now uh, just getting the volatility, super simple. All we do is take the payoffs um, minus the expectation. So very simple there. Now we can see that we get the exact same standard error. Now what we're going to do, we're going to compare without the antithetic variate. Now I'm not going to show you the code because we went through that last week and I also showed you how to do a visualization of the convergence. So if we just go down here to this graph, what we can see is that the theoretical value and the market value there in red and black Right, now we're getting a really good estimate for the actual market value uh, by using less variables. Now, if we only use 1000 variables um, for the value of the, uh, if without the antithetic, you can see that we have a really large standard error, uh, standard deviation around that estimate price, um, which is obviously uh, not as good and not as efficient. So talking about the benefits of the antithetic uh, variance reduction, we got by using the pairs, uh, epsilon um, and then minus epsilon in the same simulation, we can achieve, achieve a more accurate estimate of that M pairs of CT and then C bar. So essentially those two estimates um, are then actually more accurate than actually simulating two times M of just the CT. And the reason is because each time you only need to simulate one epsilon to get the value of two um, accurate option prices. So that's much more efficient. It is also computationally cheaper to generate that pair. We just said that, then the two instances of the CT. Now the method also ensures that the mean of the normally distributed samples, epsilon, is exactly zero, which helps improve the simulation. So hopefully the benefits of actually doing a variance reduction method um, really is quite clear just by looking at this graph. We've been able to reduce um, our estimated variance of that option price and therefore have more option, um, a more accurate option pricing available with less simulated variables and less computation. So next week, we're gonna be looking at another reduction method, which is actually control variates. And that is really analogous with um, delta hedging. So let's get into it next time. Until then, YouTube, see you later.